what the hell is this? Out of gas, huh? Mm -hmm. I knew when these dyno bikes came out, the fools that bought it would run out of gas and be like, what now? You should go electric. How much does that cost? Take a guess. 20 grand? <laughs> Not even close. 40 grand? You're getting colder. How much? I'll tell you how much. The things I look for in a donor bike. A steel frame that goes all the way around the engine. I don't want the engine to be an integral piece of the frame. See how the steel frame goes all the way around? A lot of these bike engines in the 80s and early 90s use the engine case as part of the frame and the frame only comes to here and here and bolts to the engine. You have to make a lot of stuff to fit your battery in there now. With these old school frames that come all the way around the bottom, you can just drop your battery right in there. The other thing I like is a steel frame. So I can grind it, cut it, weld to it. It's very easy to work with steel. I did a mid-drive motor on this one. I was looking for something with the rear wheel and a swing arm that I could put a chain on. No big deal, most of the bikes are gonna have that. This one would too. But on this one, if I wanna do a hub drive, I gotta look at swing arm width or I have to buy another swing arm. This swing arm is off a, well it could be a TW200. I think that's a Yamaha. The Honda Fat Cat, they're for those big balloon tires. They work great for hub motors. And it takes some fabrication to fit one of these in there and maybe monoshock it, but it can be done. Most of these hub motors, these large hub motors, are eight and a half to about nine and a half inches wide between it. Then the axles stick out about two inches on each side. So they could be anywhere from 10 and a half to let's say 13 inches wide. So you want a swing arm that you can fit one of these motors in. This one, for example, is 10 and a half inch wide. That would fit one of these big motors perfectly. It would take some modification. If you don't want to buy a swing arm, look for a bike that already has a swing arm the width you're looking for. Most 70s bikes don't. This is an 82. This will get into the wider swing arm. This is a 99. This will definitely have a wide enough swing arm. Nine inches between the inside of the swing arm. Maybe the 17 inch by six is what I'd like to go with. Something with a nice wide tire on the back. This will hold it. Clean title. That's the other thing you gotta look for when you get a bike. Do not buy these bikes on Facebook Marketplace that say bill of sale, lost title, whatever. It's all a lie. The bike is stolen. Now it may not be stolen, in reality, I'm not calling these people thieves. I'm just saying it's technically stolen. If he's lost a title, only he can go get the title for it. There's no excuse for having a lost title. He shouldn't have a lost title. He needs to go get a title. It costs $10 to go get one. Do not buy a bike with a lost title. Do not buy a bike with bill of sale only. You will never get a title. When you go to the DMV, they see that as a stolen bike. That's what it is to them, a stolen bike. And when you get your bike and your title, make sure the VIN number matches. The number's up here on the gooseneck. It's gonna make life easier and you're gonna be able to get it licensed. If you buy a bike with a title from the same state you're already in, most states do not require an inspection. I'm in Florida. If I go to Georgia and buy a motorcycle and bring it back to Florida, and then try to transfer the title to Florida, they're gonna to wanna to inspect it. They gotta make sure it has blinkers, horns, mirrors. I don't know the legalities on well, it's got an electric motor in it. I don't want to find out either. So I want to get a bike titled in my state. So I just walk down to the DMV, transfer the title to my name. I turn it into an electric bike. Nobody knows the difference. And I'm driving around with a license plate, registration, and I'm good to go. This is a Suzuki Bandit. I got it for $200. It was just a frame and wheels, and I thought it was the best deal in the world. And, and it is a good deal. I would not even have considered buying a $1,300 bike off Marketplace for my donor bike. This was a $200 bike, this was a $1,300 bike. So I took my Suzuki Bandit home, and I had to buy a headlight, $75. I had to buy the tail light and the brake light, another $25 blinkers and of course i put these fairings on it the fairings were 525 dollars i think um through king's fairings yeah, i mean you could not do that if you wanted to you can make a cafe racer make it a lot cheaper that would have saved you about 500 bucks but i wanted to make it a sport bike look but i had to buy a chain a sprocket it didn't have any front brakes i had to buy those off ebay that fit the bike perfectly 178 dollars that was crazy a horn all these things you don't think about tires you're gonna need tires no matter what bike you get you're not gonna find a junker bike with good tires then the wiring harness I had to make it all myself I had to buy every piece of wire in here I had to buy the relay the switches all the components that make up a wiring harness to make this bike road legal it was missing this foot peg I had to go and buy this foot peg it wasn't in the box of parts I didn't notice it till later An original part for $53 so all in all when I got done with my bandit that was $200 I spent $1,479 on it just to get it back on the road. Just the frame, the wiring, the brakes, things like that. We haven't even got to the electrical portion yet. All in all, this bike cost me 1,600 
and $79 for just the donor bike. Now this is the bike I would not have considered. $1,300 marketplace. Probably talk them down to a thousand bucks cash out the door. Seems like way too much money to spend on a donor bike, but it would have been cheaper. It has mirrors, it has lights, it has blinkers, it has a wiring harness, it has brake, it has everything. It has the back brake, the brake light, all the foot pegs are there, the levers are all there. This bike was complete, it has a seat. The freaking seats are expensive. So I got a complete bike here for let's say $1,300 even, still way cheaper than my $200 special. So I just want to say that about the uh, donor bikes, kind of put that in perspective when you're looking at them. What usable parts do you have on it? This one had all usable parts. This is a really clean donor. This is a 1982 Suzuki GS550. Super clean bike. All the parts work, key turns on, lights work, blinkers work, it's all there. I just need to electrify it. So what'd the bike cost? Let's go over that. First of all, what I'm getting is and what I've built here is a bike that was in about the 15,000 price range when you look at the performance, the range, you know, what's offered out there, already built and put together. Until recently, at the time of this video, Livewire just dropped their bike. This is on par with the Del Mar. It's not quite as quick. It's got the same top speed. You've got to realize the manufacturers are going to completely lie on the range. Completely lie. You've got to go to Reddit. You've got to go to places like that to actually find the range of these bikes. They're claiming 100 miles. It might go 40 miles. So that's about like this bike. This will probably go 60 miles. And so that Delmar has been dropped down to $10,000. That's a pretty good deal. This bike here is a better deal if you want to build your own bike. I think it looks cooler than the Delmar. Probably not as reliable. Probably not as quick. But it probably has the same top speed and the same range as the Livewire S2. Delmar is one of the versions. They make three versions of S2s. So yeah, those are a good deal. I really considered buying one. Okay, so I'm not going to post any link to this stuff. This is all obviously crap I'm finding on AliExpress, eBay. It's very specific to what I wanted to do. You're not going to want to do the exact same bike. You, know, you can search any of this stuff I say, but you're probably not going to have the same donor as me and all the different things. So I blew 114 bucks on the nav system, and then I blew the nav system up, and I bought another nav system. Price went up to 126. This DKD display was about 50 bucks. I had to get the mount for it, and the mount was another 14 or 15 dollars. You gotta have a throttle, AliExpress, 15 bucks. You gotta have a converter, 12 volt, 96 volts to 12 volts. Those are like 30 bucks. Most of the stuff I'm getting, I'm getting off AliExpress. It's cheap. You just may not get it, or you might get it two months later. Flasher for the blinkers, little flasher box. I think I bought that on AliExpress twice eBay once and then finally on Amazon to get it. So I bought four of those. They're only like three or four dollars a piece, but I bought four of them to get one. That's kind of how it goes. So all in all, my AliExpress purchases were $444.90. Then we move on to the big three. The battery, troller, and motor. Those are your big ones. That motor, Econic Cycles, you can't beat their prices. You look at the AliExpress prices, they'll, they'll show cheaper. It's risky purchasing from them. They'll add shipping and import fees in sometimes on these things on the bigger priced items. Your bank will sometimes reject those payments. You may have to wire them money. It becomes a hassle. You go to Econic Cycles, they're gonna have these things for pretty cheap. The motor was 950 bucks. That's about as good as I can find. The controller, ND 961200. 875 bucks and the battery of course is the killer a morge out of hong kong i think and that battery is 1817 dollars so for the big three to convert this into an e-bike or the other one into an e-bike the main part you need is three thousand six hundred and forty two dollars so when i add up my aliexpress purchases my ebay purchases for the stock parts that the suzuki bandit needed and my big three items i was into this bike for five thousand seven hundred and ninety six dollars and nineteen cents really not a bad deal for what you're getting i haven't done the performance test on it yet but i'm gonna guess it does a four and a half second zero to sixty i almost know it does exactly 100 miles an hour top end because of how i geared it with the gearing ratio test and it's probably gonna do an eighth mile in about eight and a half seconds so yeah really fun bike to ride great performance and it'll probably go between 40 and 60 miles depending on how you ride it and i don't ever ride an eco when I say 60 miles, that's riding in normal traffic, still passing cars, still not waiting around. 40 miles is when you're really on it. It's a 64 amp hour battery, 96 volts. 